Hey friends, so I'm here in the yard. I set up our new tent that I'm hoping will be a good option for when we do take both dogs backpacking. It's the Nature Hike Vic 2 and the extended vestibule that goes with the Monger by Nature Hike. And they're compatible, apparently. I'll let you know how this goes when we do get to test it out. That's not why we're here today. I wanted to give I guess a review of the Osprey Viva 50. So I took this pack for a test run when Nora and I went on our backpacking trip together. And when I came back from the trip, I decided I should probably give a review of this pack. When I was deciding on whether or not to purchase this pack, I couldn't find very much information about the Viva. There were a couple videos uh, reviews on YouTube, but they were from the actual Osprey company and from NWILD. I think there was maybe one or two other uh, consumer reviews, but it was very limited, the information from people who have actually tested out and used this pack. Hey girl, you're back again, sort of. Nora keeps coming and going. I don't know what her deal is. She, she wants in the tent, she wants out of the tent. Um, who am I to tell you to live your life, Nora? I don't know if anybody else has had this experience or feels this way, but I think with some backpacking gear that's out there, the reviews only describe the features and there's not much else to it. I know I've bought a piece of gear based on those vague recommendations and been pretty disappointed. There were big deal breaker things about it that uh, were in no way mentioned. And I know brands will upsell everything because they want you to buy it. So I guess that's my main reason, well, one of my main reasons for the review I want to share here today for this backpack. Here I've got the Viva 50. And rather than wasting time talking about all the different features it has, because those videos are already out there. I want to give kind of my personal experience and anecdotal evidence. I'm going to be making a lot of references to the Aura. That is my usual pack. This is a very well-loved and you can see even customized pack. It's my standard for quality. And I was hoping to find something a little bit like it, a little lighter and offer different features. I sort of got that with this pack, but I was let down in so many ways. I just kept thinking back to the Aura. So a big difference here is the back and this, I guess you would call suspension system, the way that the torso is adjusted, all of that. So the Aura has a slide that you can pull to adjust on the frame to lengthen or shorten the torso. This has Velcro and I found it kind of difficult to get a just right adjustment for my torso length and even when I did find the place where it should sit it still didn't feel quite right and a lot of the load was not distributed well. That's my biggest criticism of this pack is it cannot handle heavy loads well. And when I say heavy loads, I mean like 30 pounds. I know to some people that may not be very heavy, but for me, that's kind of my limit. When I'm usually backpacking for a weekend and I load up my pack, the Aura, I have it at about 20, 25 pounds. For this, obviously I had more gear because I was going out with Nora and she's young, she can't carry all her stuff on her own, and even when she's full grown, there'll be things I still have to carry for her. So obviously I had a heavier load, a lot more gear that I was taking out with her. Speaking of, hey girl, come sit behind me. Anyway, before she crashed the party, uh, I was saying that we had to take more gear because she was joining me, and that meant like, extra weight. So 30 pounds, this pack did not handle that uh, weight very well at all. And it felt like if the pain wasn't in my back, it was in my shoulders. And it didn't matter 
how I adjusted or tinkered with the straps, there was pain somewhere along the way. And I don't use the word excruciating lightly, but I think that adjective fits pretty well in this situation. Um, I had to take frequent breaks to take this thing off, um, even try to adjust it now and then, and it really didn't matter what I did, it just caused pain. Pain in my back and, like I said, pain in my shoulders. Another note is the material of these shoulder straps. The Aura has much softer padding and this webbing or mesh, whatever you want to call it, is very soft. On the Viva, it's abrasive. And um, I took a quick clip of it. I don't know if you can see, but I've got bruises on both sides of my shoulders. And under my armpit, uh, there started to be a hot spot. And it was just rubbing and chafing my shoulders and my armpits the whole way. Um, not a good situation to be in. Um, maybe I'm not trail hardened enough, but in my book, if the pack is causing you like physical harm, it's not, it's not good. The hip belt is made of the same material, just this very abrasive and rough mesh and webbing and is not comfortable. So a few of the features that I thought would make a difference that this pack, the Viva has, that the Osprey Aura does not have is this um, external water bladder pocket. So you don't have to go in the pack. I thought that would be pretty cool to have, but when this pack is filled up, there is no room. There's no way to get a full two liter water bladder in there. I tried putting my um, CNOC bladder in there and it just, it hung out from the, from the little pocket here and was like hitting me in the back of the neck. So uh, if your pack is really full, you're not gonna actually have the pocket space there. Another feature this pack has that the Aura does not have is the adjustable hip belt. And by that, I mean, it's what they call the fit on the fly. So it's Velcro and you can slide the hip belt uh, in or out to lengthen or shorten it, but I didn't find it to make all that big of a difference. Uh, the general fit of this pack just was not right for me, and no matter how I adjusted it, like I said, it just did not uh, carry the load the way I needed it to. Um, as for space, uh, it had a decent amount of space. It is a whole 15 liters less than my regular pack, and I was able to fit everything we needed into it. But something that I've been disappointed in just about all Osprey packs with are these side pockets. I had a hard time uh, getting my water bottle in and out of this pocket, even when utilizing this little side opening feature that is supposed to make it so that, I guess if you put the water bottle upside down and on an angle, you can just reach and pull the bottle out because your shoulder the joint doesn't work that way to pull all the way around to pull the water bottle out from the top of the side pocket. I mean, I guess if you like dislocate your shoulder to reach the ball, you probably could, but then you've got some bigger problems on your hand. But yeah, so I found it was very difficult to get the water bottle out of that pocket, even with this feature that's supposed to remedy it. So is there anything I actually like about this? Um, Yes, so I do like that you can unclip the front pocket in these three places. On the Aura, there's just the top clip, but there's two side clips uh, and their compression straps along with the top clip. And that kind of allows you more ease in getting into this front pocket if you're trying to like stuff a layer in there or whatever piece of gear you need to get to quickly. So that was very nice having the ability to unclip and then extend the room to get to this pocket, especially like I said, when the pack is like really full. The color is cute. I mean, that's another nice thing I can say about it. I hate to just write this pack off and say it's all terrible. Um, 
perhaps if I was going solo in the summertime, this could be a decent option. And because it's warmer, I'll be needing less layers, much lighter gear, um, maybe not even a sleeping bag. Maybe in those circumstances, it could be a good option. But I think the deal breaker with it is just how abrasive these shoulder straps are. Um, I don't really want to think about in hotter months how that will affect uh, my shoulders. I always wear tank tops. That's just the most comfortable layering for me. So to think with all the sweating, even if it's not a heavier load in the pack, is just kind of like uh, a torture scene in my mind. But uh, I guess because it's Osprey, like their name, their brand, I was expecting something of the same quality as the Aura, and I really just didn't get that. This really is one of those situations where you get what you paid for. This pack was, I believe, 165 compared to the Aura, which uh, usually I think it's between 260 and 280 So you're looking at almost $300 for this pack, and then not even $200 for the Viva. So you definitely get what you pay for. Lesser quality, the material is not as good, and the comfort level is also not that great. So as far as a budget pack, um, I don't know. I guess you decide if those things are a deal breaker to you, but for me, it definitely was enough that I think I'm gonna return this. I'm, I don't see myself holding on to this pack or using it again. I've just been too, too scarred physically and emotionally. I think I learned my lesson. If you find a pack that is the one for you, don't go chasing after others to see if the grass is greener on the other side, because it's not going to be. If I do ever want to downgrade to a smaller capacity, I'm going to go with the Aura 50. Um, right now, I guess I'm going to keep utilizing the 65. It hasn't done me wrong yet, especially with this shoulder situation. So I have only had that happen with the Aura once, and that was when I did the Foothills Trail. After five out of seven days of walking, I finally started to have um, some temporary markings on my shoulder from the shoulder straps rubbing, and this started a couple hours into the hike. So again, just kind of a note about the difference in quality and way that it carries a load. I'm going to do a pack review for Nora's pack. She tested out her first serious doggy backpack. And unlike this review, that will be um, lots of glowing things to say. She had just the opposite of me. While I was dying inside carrying this stupid thing, um, she didn't miss a beat with her pack, jumping over things, whatever. Anyway, thanks so much for taking time out of your day to watch. If you're not subscribed to the channel, then go ahead and subscribe or don't, that's fine too. Now there is a Patreon page, so if you wanna show a little extra support, there's two tiers with different benefits. Uh, it would mean the world to me if you went over there just to even check it out. But I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind